Hello, hello. Listen, it's a crisis out here, and we need all hands on deck. We need all hands on deck. Uh, this is all hands on deck, and of course, I'm the guest host, Marshall Hatch, chairman of the Leaders Network, and we miss our regular host today, whose show this is, Reverend Ira J. Acri. Want to say to him, get well, buddy. Stay on the mend, and we'll hold it down until you get back. Uh, but again, you're tuned in to All Hands on Deck. Uh, of course, this is sponsored by GSG Family Life Center. Uh, this is a called in live uh, show. And of course, uh, we are a part of the uh, GSG Family Life Center. Our number there is 773 378 3300. Variety of uh, programs being offered there. And um, you, you have the number and the address right on the west side of Chicago. Again, we are in a crisis here and we need all hands on deck. Uh, today we're going to be a very special topic. Uh, this weekend coming up is Father's Day. And so uh, we're going to be talking about Black Fathers Matter. We heard of Black Lives Matter. We know that all lives matter. And so on that theme, we're going to talk about all black fathers matter. Black fathers matter. Uh, the fact of the matter is, when you look at the crisis in fatherhood in our community, and who of us could have uh, felt the same last week was a reinstallment of roots. And you saw uh, all of the stresses that slavery, chattel slavery, put on the black family, the intentional breaking up of the black family. And one of the interesting um, um, facts, uh, listen, in 1960, 1960, 70 percent of all African-American children born were born to a two parent family with a father and a mother. And so um, here we are, fast forward, 2016, and now the majority of African-American children are uh, born uh, to a single family, a single mom often. And so we need to talk about today with fathers, they're approaching that fathers do matter. Uh, children are more likely to drop out of school without a relationship with their father, more likely to end up in jail, more likely to be depressed. Uh, less likely to have grit and perseverance necessarily that it takes to be successful in life uh, and does not mean that children can't succeed and don't succeed under uh, le less than uh, perfect conditions. Uh, but it still does not take away from the fact that all fathers matter. I think we got a call uh, right now uh, and we're going to loop that caller in and we're talking about, of course, the importance of fathers and how important black fathers are. Uh, and how important it is for us to be involved in our children's lives. Carla, are you there? Yes, I am. I wanted to make a couple of points, and I think that you raise a very important issue. Um, we cannot stress enough the value of fatherhood, uh, especially for young men. Um, yeah, it is certainly the case that I think women are doing a wonderful job out there, single yes. mothers, you know, uh, all, all kudos to them. But the reality is that they cannot be, be a father and a mother to a, a young man. A, a young men require at some point a, a mentor, a male father figure. And lacking that, they will go outside of the home and they will find one. And that, that person that they find might not be the most positive one in the world. They may be only a few years older than they are. They may be the guy on the corner. They may be the drug dealer, the gang member. They'll be somebody that they're going to emulate if they don't have a father figure in the home. And, and you're absolutely right with regard to out of wedlock birth and so forth. But at the same time, I, I would contend that just because uh, you and a, and a woman produced a child outside of the framework of marriage, traditional marriage, does not mean that you are prohibited somehow from participating in that child's life. You can still have an active role in that child's life 
And, and that's the message I think we need to get across to young people. Okay, you and the mother didn't get married. Uh, you know, you're not a family in, in terms of, you know, what we see on television. Um, you know, you didn't get married and then decide to have children and grew up together and all of this sort of thing. But you can still play a role in your child's life. Absolutely. And I think that that, unfortunately, is something that gets lost all too often, that just because we didn't do everything according to the book, you know, in terms of what, you know, popular culture tells us we should do, um, it doesn't mean that you can't play an active role in your child's life. Yes, yeah. you get them on the weekends. You may get them in the evenings, every other holiday. I, th I think to be I, there. Well, thank you very much, Carla. But I think you make you make some great, great points, uh, and and we appreciate your call and appreciate the fine points that you made. Almost all of us grow up in less than perfect circumstances or less than ideal circumstances. And I think the call has made a tremendous point that uh, that does not prohibit us from doing uh, what we should do and playing the right role, uh, particularly as it comes to being fathers. Listen, I know firsthand how important fathers are. Uh, I was raised in a single parent home. But guess what? My mother died when I was eight and the single parent was my father. And so uh, I learned very on as, um, as, a, as a young man growing up how important that male parent was. And in fact, you know, nobody wants to lose their mother. But I learned very early on, particularly in my teenage years, that if I had to have an essential parent that had prepared me for life, that I said God had left me with the parent I needed, which was my father. And so um, that, that's where we're coming from when we say black fathers matter. Fathers matter. And we can't behave as if fathers don't matter. You know, fathers provide often discipline. Uh, you know, my son, I'm expecting him to come in uh, before the end of this show. Matter of fact, I see him uh, coming in and he's going to share with you a little bit about what it felt like growing up with us. Uh, again, you're tuned in to Family Life Center. Our number is 773-378-3300. Reverend Ira Acri is uh, our regular host, and I'm filling in as a guest co-host for Reverend Acri. And uh, we want him to, of course, get on the mend and, and to keep mending. And we're looking forward to having him back in his rightful place. And right now, I'm being joined by Marshall Hatch Jr. Hey, everybody. What's up, Which Doc? is my son. How you doing, young oh, man? Well, it's good to see you. Welcome. You young. Well, let me just say this. It takes a lot of patience being a father. It I didn't does. expect him to exactly be on time, <laughs> and I was right. But, you know, that's how it is sometimes. Parenting, you got to expect the, uh, your children to be less than perfect. And, of course, he's never disappointed me in that capacity. Looks like we got a caller on there. We got a caller? We have a caller? Okay, we're going to take another awesome. caller at this time. Yes. Okay. Oh, I thought we had one. Okay. So, Marsha, you, yes. you were able to get here. Uh, today we talked about the importance of fathers, how fathers matter. Mm. I shared part of my story. I was raised by a single parent who happened to be my father. Yeah. And I thought it was very important uh, because um, that parent is one who had a great deal to do with preparing me for life. Yeah. So and I think I think that you have had a, a great deal in my development, my personal development. I had you and mom, so I'm one of the, the blessed or lucky. So you boys. had the nurturer. I had the nurturer and, and the, I had the disciplinarian, shall we that, say. Would that be me? That was you. Don't <laughs> believe all whatever he would tell you in private. I didn't no. do all of it. Okay. But even discipline shows a great capacity love. Yeah. to love. And so Absolutely. I appreciate you. Um, Part of what I'm focusing on now, I'm working with the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights this summer yes. as an internship. and uh, I'm very proud of that, too. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yes. I'm studying the school-to-prison pipeline, particularly in the Midwest and in Indiana. And what we've been discovering is that um, not only the historical roots play a part, so the context, but also... Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the continuation of, of poverty and, and crime in certain communities that have been um, 
really purposely constructed after the Great Migration, so on and so forth. But these communities continue to suffer from the highest suspension rates, the highest expulsion rates, and of course, African Americans suffer, African American males suffer disproportionately. And many of those guys do not have father figures. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, so, a, it's an interesting story about how the context has put all these stresses on the family. Mm -hmm. So it's not about just simply beating up the men about not being responsible. Right. But we know, for example, on the west side of Chicago, we lost 70 percent of our jobs wow. between 1970 and 1980 at the time I came of age. Wow. And I saw the change. Looks like we got a caller. Do we, we got a caller? We're going to take a caller now. Let, let's hear from someone who's called in. You're on, on hands on deck. Okay, we're going to keep on rolling. Yeah. Yeah, so, we, so we, you know, we talked about, we talked about um, you know, how the context has helped shape a lot of the stresses on the family. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough simply to beat up the men, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to learn, as we've always had to learn, how do you, um, you know, fight against the odds mm -hmm. that are against you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think, yeah. I think to some of our men's credit, a lot of our men in our communities deserve a lot of praise because they have not been biological fathers, but they've been spiritual fathers. Absolutely. They've really taken up the mantle, and I don't think they get a lot of credit, quite yeah. honestly. And um, we've seen that in communities, in extended families. Churches, schools. And churches, congregational life, school teachers, where you've had men who've kind of, who stepped up and played that role. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the theme, all hands on deck. Right. I mean, we need all of us kind of stepping up to the plate as men. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, bi biology is only a part of fatherhood. Right. Fatherhood really is spiritual. And that's always been, to what I understand, uh, the African-American ethic. You know, the African-American proverb, I am because we are. I am because somebody sacrificed and produced me. Yeah. There's and I am the one that sent him to school. Go ahead. But there's always been this concept. That's a good joke, by the way. Yeah. I forgot to laugh. Yeah. There's always been this concept of the extended family. Why would and you laugh at the truth? <laughs> I go thought ahead. you were joking. Oh, no, go ahead. That's all right. I guess the truth can be jokes. Yeah. No, but I think we raise a good point. Uh, we certainly need to highlight some of these fathers, these spiritual fathers in, in the media. Yeah, I mean, you know, to tell you the truth, it's probably... You know, I have a multifaceted ministry. We do all kind of things, community development, community activism, so on and so forth. But probably one of the most meaningful roles I've been able to play is to be the kind of senior male figure mm -hmm. in a community that becomes, you know, literally a father. You know, the Bible says a father to the fatherless. God mm -hmm. is, you know, to literally be able to stand in the gap and help really consciously and intentionally know that you're influencing an entire generation of young people. Right. And the satisfaction of knowing, I mean, to be honest with you, they'll never forget you. Because, you know, that male role model uh, influence is so profound mm -hmm. that, you know, you figure you'll be alive even when you're dead if you invest yourself in you. Right, people. you pull yourself in. Yeah, you pull yourself into it. Absolutely. So, again, uh, you are tuned in to All Hands on Deck, and you see the call-in number there, 312-738-1060. Of course, we're here in the stead of Reverend Ira J. Acre. Whoop, whoop. On Ira the man. J. And this is, of course, uh, a show sponsored by GSJ Family Life Center. And the number there is 773-378-3300-1256 North Waller on the great west side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's a great topic. I mean, we got Father's Day coming up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we often think about the, uh, many of us out of faith traditions, you know, the biblical injunction to honor your father. And what's very interesting about that mm. is that there's not necessarily conditions put on that command. That there's something about us that um, makes ourselves whole, you know, when we honor our fathers. I think the, mm. the greatest thing that fathers do is claim children, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, or, you know, some sense of claim or affirmation or owning up to you know paternity but uh for a child or a young person to make peace with whatever past they're being 
and and honor their father. You've worked with a lot of young men yeah. in high schools uh, in your capacity as a college counselor and mm. as a as a counselor in high school and yeah. your internships. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about the kind of pain that you've seen from young men who have not made peace with their fathers in the sense that honor them in spite of the shortcomings of the father, what the fathers did or mm -hmm. didn't do, mm -hmm. but learning to make peace with that mm -hmm. and still honor paternity. Mm -hmm. Certainly, um, as a teenager in that stage of development, it's very hard to process internally the void that an absentee father uh, leaves. It's very hard to understand that conceptually. So uh, my, my past internship at Perspectives as a intern social worker, I worked with uh, grades seven all the way up to 12. These young men, these were considered the, the, the troubled young men. You know, they were on the verge of being expelled. They had been suspended a few times. Um, and the common factor, the common thread for all of them is an absent father. Yeah. And trying to help them process what that meant and how it really played a role in a lot of their behavioral issues uh, was pretty difficult. So this was a big part of your uh, counseling load with yeah. them had to do with helping them to to process. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I call it making peace. Yeah. You know, because the past is the past. You can't change it. Right. And all you can do is is learn how to, you know, make peace. I, you know, mm. when I, I was a James Brown fan, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, it also, it was whatever it was. But you're here and you get to move on and you have to make peace with that and you can't live a life of being anger or angry or bitter about mm -hmm. what somebody else didn't do and i've studied the, the clinical terms and so what we're really describing is trauma and trauma yes. theory says so trauma theory says in order to really get over the traumatic event it needs to be integrated into your life wow. so you need to reinterpret it it needs to be processed mm -hmm. talked through mm -hmm. thought through mm -hmm. prayed through mm -hmm. in order to really defeat it and, uh, and overcome it you know it's interesting you you would use that clinical language and the first thing comes to my mind you know in order to uh, overcome a trauma you have to integrate it into integrity the f it, not only integrity mm -hmm. but I'm thinking of testimony right it becomes your testimony right right uh, which is all that you've been through has made you who you are I right. mean like I've learned even in raising you guys mm -hmm. I'm learning to, to try not to be so hard on you because you could you could not have had my experience I really had to develop a certain amount of resiliency just because of the circumstance of my own trauma because mm -hmm. my mother's death to me I processed that at eight as abandonment, abandonment. Yeah. and I didn't understand it fully until I was 30 Wow. You know, that I use that language. I've only been using that language since I was an adult. But as a kid, I didn't know what it was. It was just, it felt as, it felt like, you know, and then, you know, you have emotional issues. You mm -hmm. have difficulty with affection. You, you push people away because wow. you think they're going to ban all of the stuff that goes along with that. And so, but my testimony is I would not be who I am if I had not had those kinds of trauma. So that's the whole biblical yeah. piece that all things have Work worked together, together for the good. good. And that's where people have to come out post-trauma in order to be healthy. Absolutely. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Kind of hard to, for the preacher not to preach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Somebody but should call that, in and simply say amen. Just that's call that, in and say amen. That's that reintegration yeah. of what has happened to me and interpreting that in a way that allows me to see myself as not a victim but as an overcomer. Right. Well, that's why I said integrity. Yes. You know, one definition to of integrate. integrity is actually wholeness or yes. to be holy. Yes. Uh, yeah. So spiritually, yes, and and physically and psychologically, and yes. understanding the whole self and moving on. Absolutely, yeah. you are tuned in to All Hands on Deck, and this is of course uh, a show uh, sponsored by the GSJ Family Life Center. 
uh, Reverend Ira Acri. Reverend Ira Acri is our regular host, and we'll be sitting in for him the next three weeks. Uh, you know, we hope that we can get Marshall here, maybe on time, uh, once or twice, uh, you know, in subsequent weeks. But you know how it is. I mean, he's young, uh, not quite as settled and dependable <laughs> and reliable as I am. But, you know, as I'm learning, he's doing the best he can. Yeah, the best I can. He's had such a privilege against, upbringing. Against the odds. The apple no. doesn't fall far from the tree. Against, Don't let him deceive against, you. He's late most case, of the time. Against good odds. I came up through the projects. My book is Project America. That's true. It's a good Shameless book, plug. too. Good book. It's a great book. Yeah. So um, we've got just a few minutes left. Um, you're doing some work with uh, with the you know Department of uh, of Justice. Just tell us a little bit about that, and, sure. and then we're gonna wrap up. We got Father's Day coming, and want to get back to that before we mm -hmm. close out. Mm -hmm. um, it's with the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, actually, which is kind of like an independent organization, which was established by Congress some time ago. It's also a, a bipartisan organization, so it works on both sides of the aisle, really to investigate and study civil rights issues. So uh, the school to prison pipeline is what I'm studying this summer, and I believe it happens to be the civil rights issue of our time. I was reading uh, a guy out of Indiana University, Bloomington today, who's a historian. He was talking about the waves of how uh, the school to prison pipeline came to be. The first wave was after Reconstruction, which was intentionally um, dismantled um, in 1870, and how terrorism and white supremacy really came back stronger in the mm -hmm. South and all over the country. We call it Jim Crow. Well, well yeah. the reign of terror, literally. The reign of right, terror. Right the reign of terror. And then right after Reconstruction, you have the system of convict leasing, which is worse than slavery, worse than sharecropping. Because you arrest somebody for vagrancy, which is just standing on the corner, yeah. not working. And then you literally sentence them to, they get a felony for vagrancy. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the concept of chain We're going to give you a job. Basically. Yeah. Uh, so from chain gangs and convict leasing all the way up to mass incarceration and what we see now with the prison industrial complex, it's really a, a, a searing diabolical system that needs to be dismantled. So I hope uh, that we can sound the alarm uh, and get folks on board. This is the movement worth dying for and the movement worth worth living for. That's, that's very interesting. Well, well, all the best to you on your um, summer with the... Um, U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. That? Pray for him. Yes. He'll get it someday. Well, I mean, it's, I, I went to the project school, <laughs> public school for the project. I blame kids. it. I'm doing that. the best I can. Many of the people, odds. <laughs> many people have come out of the project. <laughs> many people. Well, look, this, coming up this weekend is Father's Day. Amen. And our challenge, I think, uh, with the information that we've shared today, is uh, let's make it a practice of whatever the circumstances of our birth. Number one, mm. you're alive. And if you're alive, it means you're a winner. Uh, you've got a grace, the gift of life. And so, um, you know, make peace with the circumstances of your birth. Mm. Make peace with your father. And, uh, and uh, you know, send a card or, or a call or some kind of way. I want to commend Danny Davis and the work of the people in the 7th Congressional District who took children uh, to visit their fathers this past weekend who were incarcerated, wow. uh, which they do every year. That kind of thing, I think, can go a long way toward healing. Absolutely. Well, it's been a tremendous blessing. Uh, we'll be back on next week with On Hands on Deck. And, of course, uh, we miss Pastor Acri. You have been tuned in to a program that is sponsored by the GSJ Family Life Center. That number is 773-378-3300. And so we are about to sign off. We want to thank you, Marsha, for coming and being Thank you for having me. Of, uh, um, and on this, this Father's Day week, I want you to let you know you have been the most influential yeah. figure in my well, life. I, I appreciate I you. I, I, I love you. Some kind of monetary 
compensation uh, is what I would probably uh, would have. I didn't the mention most that the internship for. is an unpaid one, so I'll have to wait. To I don't want to hear too. any sob stories. This is my weekend, <laughs> and I want what Mama got a few weeks ago. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you for tuning in, and we're going to see you next week. Until then, remember we're in a crisis. We need all hands on deck. God bless.